When I think back to the computer I grew up with, three things come to mind. Windows XP, waiting five minutes for the thing to turn on, and of course, the games. Now, even in 2004, our computer wasn't that much of a powerhouse. Its primary purpose was writing Word documents and getting on the web, but those limitations weren't enough to stop me from trying to play games on it. Granted, anything graphically intensive was out of the question, but thankfully there were plenty of other options for computer games in the early 2000s, like games included in Windows, Flash games in the browser, and most important of all, free downloads from services like eGames, Big Fish Games, MSN Game Zone, and Real Arcade. Generally, these services operated on some form of free trial, as in, you could play the fully featured game, but only for about an hour or so. Once time was up, you'd have to pay to unlock the full version. Now, usually, this meant it was time to move on to another game. But, if the game you had played was really good, you'd show your support for the developer and... download the trial version again from a different service. If you were lucky, your save data would even transfer over. And thus, you would continue to play the trial version of the game for free, downloading it again and again from progressively shadier sites, installing more and more bloatware with each version, all in the name of free games. I did this for a few games, but one of them I liked so much that well over a decade since playing it, I decided to track down a physical copy, just so I could finally play it again. That game being... Bricks of Egypt. As an arcade-style game, the premise of Bricks of Egypt is very simple. With the mouse, you control the blue bat at the bottom of your screen. Your job is to bounce the ball off all the bricks in the tomb to clear the screen without letting the ball fall out of the bottom. In case you haven't noticed, Bricks of Egypt is an Arkanoid clone which itself was an expanded Breakout clone. And let's be honest, the idea of Breakout has been copied a million times on its own, from arcade machines in the 90s to the Apple Newton, and as the Brick Breaker game on tons of Blackberry phones. Even Google Images has an Easter egg version of Breakout. Even so, the Pong meets Space Invaders gameplay of Breakout on the Atari 2600 translates wonderfully to the desktop. The controls are intuitive, but still present a challenge as the ball begins to speed up during a round. The levels are bigger, but the bricks come in a greater variety, with some being destroyed in one hit, some taking up to three, and others that are completely indestructible. Spreading fire blocks and walls controlled by a switch also adds some elements of strategy to the game. Things are also kept interesting by the power-ups that randomly drop when you break a block. Sometimes you get a bigger bat, laser guns, multiple balls, laser guns. Other times your bat shrinks, or you lose a life, or you get some weird blue eye things that just float around and get in the way and make it really hard to control where the ball is going to go, and generally speaking, the level design is pretty good, usually incorporating some kind of puzzle or aim challenge, but others are just plain evil, like this one, where you have to make the same tricky shot over and over again until you make your whole way to the top. This level also highlights another issue with these types of games. Sometimes you lose control of the ball for a pretty long time, at which point the game relies less on reflexes and skill, and more on chance and how lucky your first shot was. The laser gun's power-up can turn the game into nothing more than a button masher, and when paired with the power-up block, it becomes really overpowered really quickly. Then again, I could say the opposite for all those statements. The evil levels are just challenges that require a lot of skill. Losing control of the ball increases the potential for high reward with each shot. The laser guns present the challenge of shooting down the bricks while still focusing on keeping the ball in play, and the power-up block drops just as many downgrades as it does upgrades. If it sounds like I'm getting too deep into this simple arcade game, it's because I am. I love this game, now as much as I did 14 years ago. Call it nostalgia. Call it an addiction formed from my limited exposure to the game as a kid, making every extra free hour I got to play it a greater and greater reward. Or just call it what it is. A fun little PC arcade game from the early 2000s. Easy to learn, hard to master, and really expanded upon compared to other Breakout clones. All within 10 megabytes. And how could I forget? The reason I could even play this game was because it ran on nothing specs, even for 2004. I'm running the game in a virtual machine here, but you can actually play a Flash demo version of it in your browser right now on the game creator Arcade Lab's website. Looking around on the website, it appears that Bricks of Egypt was popular enough to spin off a few sequels, like Bricks of Egypt 2. Bricks of Atlantis, and Bricks of Camelot. They all seem to be retextured versions of the same game, but with a few new items to keep it interesting. I might check them out in the future, but for now, I'm perfectly contented with a game that's more fun now than it was a decade ago when I first played it.